And Mary was possibly one of the earliest few who saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you must understand that the resurrection of Christ was even more important than His birth and His arrival on earth. Before Jesus died, He taught God's Word to thousands of people and He would be known as a great teacher if He did not resurrect from the dead. Jesus also healed many people and performed miracles when He was alive. He would be known as the anointed servant of God if He did not resurrect from the dead. Jesus also gave prophecies about future events. And if these prophecies came to pass, He would be known as a prophet if He died and remained in the grave. Even if God supernaturally conceived Jesus in Mary's womb as the Messiah, if He was not resurrected from the dead, He was as good as a buried Messiah. But church, I want you to know that Mary's encounter with Jesus on the third day of His death changed the entire narrative. Jesus was not a dead teacher. He was not a deceased servant of God, the departed prophet or the perished Messiah. Tell your neighbor right now, Jesus, Jesus' tomb is empty and He's alive today. Jesus' tomb is empty and alive because Jesus Christ died, He was buried, and He rose on the third day from the grave and is now the Saviour of the world. Can somebody say Amen? And let me read to you right now from John 20. In John 20, let's look at Jesus' death and resurrection. John 20 verse 1 says this, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Something like this. The stone was rolled away. The Bible says that it was the first day of the week. It referred to a Sunday because the Jewish calendar ended the week on Saturday. Let's look at verse 2 right now. So Mary ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple and the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going towards the tomb. And verse 4, both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths laying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Now these two disciples went to the tomb. They saw the stone being rolled away, and there was no physical body found inside the tomb. Now you must understand that linen cloths were used to wrap up Jesus' body after his death as per the Jewish custom. But these linen cloths were found inside the tomb, especially the one that was covering Jesus' face. They were found inside the tomb but without the body. And the sight of the linen cloths indicated to us that Jesus' body was not stolen. Why? Because no one who wanted to steal the body would unwrap the linen cloths, right? If they wanted to steal the body, because the body would have started to decay. And that's why in verse 8, it says this, Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. Now, for verse 9 says, For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their respective homes. So the disciples left the tomb believing that something supernatural had just happened at the tomb area. 
Verse 11. But Mary, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. Now, unlike the two disciples who went back, Mary did not. Mary didn't rush back home, but she stayed on to process her grief at the tomb. Verse 12. Look at verse 12 right now. Verse 12 says this. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why? Why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. In verse 15, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me. Tell me where you have laid him that I will take him away. And that's when Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And verse 17, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and said to them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary saw Jesus in his resurrected form. Now you must understand that it was not a ghost that she saw, right? It was not a ghost because Mary could touch Jesus physically in verse 17. She felt and she touched Christ. And Mary was possibly one of the earliest few who saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you must understand that the resurrection of Christ was even more important than his birth and his arrival on earth. Before Jesus died, he taught God's word to thousands of people and he would be known as a great teacher if he did not resurrect from the dead. Jesus also healed many people and performed miracles when he was alive. He would be known as the anointed servant of God if he did not resurrect from the dead. Jesus also gave prophecies about future events. And if these prophecies came to pass, he would be known as a prophet if he died and remained in the grave. Even if God supernaturally conceived Jesus in Mary's womb as the Messiah, if he was not resurrected from the dead, he was as good as a buried Messiah. But church, I want you to know that Mary's encounter with Jesus on the third day of his death changed the entire narrative. Jesus was not a dead teacher. He was not a deceased servant of God, the departed prophet or the perished Messiah. Tell your neighbor right now, Jesus, Jesus' tomb is empty and he's alive today. Jesus' tomb is empty and alive because Jesus Christ died, he was buried, and he rose on the third day from the grave and is now the Savior of the world. Can somebody say amen? amen. And today, more than 2,000 years later, many Many people who don't understand the supernatural power of God will try to explain away the resurrection of Christ. Some will say that, could it be, could it be that Mary was so grieved that, that she was hallucinating about Jesus that day? Well, it was a possibility. Since Mary was so grieved that she did not sleep much or eat well, since Jesus' crucifixion. And the most scientific way to verify the resurrection of Jesus is to examine ancient proof or ancient documents from the same period of Mary and Jesus. Now, incidentally, we do have an ancient letter written about 60 years after Christ's death and resurrection. This letter 
was circulating among the Christians in the first century and was written by Apostle Paul. And it is the letter of the first Corinthians that we read today in our Bible. It is the earliest letter written by the early church in the first century. And let's examine this important letter right now that testify to the resurrection of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 15, let me read to you right now, it says this in verse 3, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died. Paul wrote that he died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried in a tomb, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas or to Cyphus, then to the twelve. Verse 6, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, to Paul. So Paul, who also had a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ, he did his research and he found out that more than 500 people saw Jesus Christ after his death. At the point of Paul's letter, many of these witnesses were still alive and testified to Christ's resurrection. Now, if today we were to base on, base on evidence collected by eyewitnesses, let's say even, even if Mary were hallucinating that day, we can't explain away the 500 people who saw Jesus Christ alive. Another possibility to explain away the resurrection of Christ is that Jesus did not die. Instead, he fainted on the cross. Fainted because of the physical torture and the massive loss of blood. And thinking that he had died, the Roman soldiers then took him down from the cross and the disciples then buried him in the tomb. And after three days, Jesus woke up from his coma and was found by the disciples, totally healed of all his wounds. And let me explain to you that this that I just described could not have happened as well. Why? Because the Roman soldiers who crucified Jesus, they were professional executors of crucifixion. They were trained to see real and fake death. And that was why they pierced Jesus by the side to ensure that he had really died because both water and blood came out of Jesus when they pierced him, indicating to all of us that Jesus' heart has stopped pumping that day. And that evidence of both water and blood from his side showed that Jesus had died. Furthermore, it was tough, very tough to stay alive when Jesus was already severely tortured before being nailed and hung vertically on the cross. And let's say, let's say, let's say, uh, hypothetically, that Jesus faked his death. It was a fake death and was later found by his disciples who also tried to cover up the entire story. Assuming, I'm assuming, it is not true, but assuming hypothetically. So if that's the case, how do we explain that the disciples of Jesus Christ would rather die of martyrdom, they means die of religious purpose, religious cause, and they, would, they chose not to deny Jesus as the resurrected Savior. If you were to trace the history of Christianity, you will find that 11 of the 12 disciples were killed for proclaiming Jesus' death and resurrection. The 12th disciple was exiled to the island of Patmos, and he wrote the book of Revelation. And let me give you two examples of how the disciples of Jesus actually died. The first example is that of Andrew. Now, Andrew was sentenced to death by crucifixion because he angered a Roman governor in Achaia, somewhere southern Greece today, he angered the governor for preaching the gospel and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
He was given a chance to renounce Jesus Christ's resurrection. Andrew said, no, I cannot do that. My question is this, why would Andrew lie about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and yet be willing, be willing to be tortured and die for someone who did not resurrect from the dead? Unless, of course, my friend, unless Jesus' death and resurrection did happen. And Andrew was willing to die for him because he saw with his own eyes Jesus' resurrection. The second example is Simon Peter. Simon Peter was sentenced to crucifixion as well because he refused, refused to deny Jesus Christ as his Lord and King, refused to renounce Jesus, his belief and what he saw regarding Jesus' death and resurrection. And before his own crucifixion, he witnessed his own wife being crucified. He told his wife this when his wife was led away for crucifixion. He told his wife this, remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. And when Peter's turn came, he was crucified on the cross and he requested, he requested the Roman soldiers to crucify him upside down. The cross was, he was hung on the cross and they flipped it around. Why? Because Peter felt that he was not worthy to die in the same way that Jesus Christ died. If Jesus faked his death and the disciples were trying to play up this entire fake resurrection, do you think Peter would die such a horrible death together with his wife for someone who did not resurrect from the dead. My friend, I don't think so. Peter died for someone whom he knew would resurrect him from the dead as well. Can somebody say amen? All this evidence, when put together, tells us that Jesus Christ, our Lord, He died on the cross and was found alive after the third day. The resurrection story of Jesus Christ enabled the disciples to live fearlessly for Him, even to the point of death. 